Thank you to KiwiCo for supporting PBS Digital Studio. Okay, I just went indoor skydiving so I could feel what it was like to be a raindrop. Because imagine a raindrop, you're probably imagining it wrong. Okay, so if I ask you to draw a raindrop, most of you would probably draw this. I mean, that's how we've been doing it since we were kids, right? But this is wrong. A falling raindrop doesn't look like this. It's physically impossible. Now, when water drips, say from a faucet, each drop does kind of take on a teardrop shape as its tail drags behind it, but only for a split second. Pretty quickly, the drops become blob-shaped. And that's because surface tension takes over. A surface tension happens because water molecules are more attracted to each other than to the air around them. So once they split from the faucet or whatever they fall from, they form the shape with the smallest surface area for its volume, which is a sphere. So raindrops can never form that old teardrop shape, but they also aren't perfect spheres because raindrops are falling fast. And this means they're subject to air resistance. Air is a fluid. It's obviously not wet the way we typically think of a fluid, but in physics, a fluid is just a substance that deforms or flows around an object when that object is pushing on another one. If you've ever held your hand outside the car, you felt the air deform or flow around your hand but the air also exerts a force against your hand. To keep your hand still, your muscles have to exert an equal force in the opposite direction. This is what happens when water's falling through the atmosphere. Several forces are acting on it at once. Gravity's pulling it down. Collisions with air molecules provide a force in the other direction. And there's attractive forces between the water molecules holding the drop together. Now, all of these combined flatten out the spherical drop in a sort of hamburger kind of shape. Of course, how do we know for sure that's what they look like? We can't exactly go up in the sky with a magnifying glass and fall along with raindrops to examine their shape. But we can do that down here on Earth with a really big fan. Now, these droplets are suspended in a vertical wind tunnel. It's the same kind that's used for indoor skydiving. Droplets suspended in a vertical wind tunnel are experiencing the same net forces as falling raindrops. Only instead of the droplets falling and hitting the air on their way down, the air is rising and hitting the drops on its way up. As an object begins to fall due to gravity, it accelerates. Its velocity increases until the force of collisions with air molecules is equal to the force of gravity pulling it down. At this point, it stops accelerating. The velocity levels off. This is terminal velocity. Different objects have different terminal velocities depending on their surface area, their mass, things like that. Now, my body wants to get to the ground because of gravity. The tunnel is blasting air up for me at about 95 or 100 miles an hour. For a professional stunt flyer, the speed can be as high as 150 miles an hour, but I'm clearly not a professional. The point is, I can float in a wind tunnel because of these opposing forces, gravity in one direction and the collisions of air molecules in the other. An object floating in a wind tunnel is experiencing the same net forces as an object falling at terminal velocity. So when we suspend a droplet of water in the wind tunnel, we're seeing exactly what we'd see if we were falling through the air next to a raindrop at terminal velocity. And what we see is definitely not the old shape that we drew when we were kids. Real raindrops actually come in four rough shapes. We'll call them spheres, burger buns, pancakes, and parachutes. Remember how I said spherical blobby shapes minimize surface area thanks to surface tension? Well, the smallest cloud droplets start out as these spheres, but on the way down, small drops bump into each other and combine into bigger ones. And those larger raindrops have more surface area for air to push on, so they flatten out even more. And once a drop reaches five to six millimeters, which is about the size of a house fly, it'll go from bun-shaped to parachute-shaped. As it gets bigger, it rips itself apart. The force from air becomes more than the attraction between the water molecules, and it scatters into a bunch of smaller, rounder drops. So how big can a raindrop be? 
Well, it's hard to say, but in tests, they rarely ever hit seven millimeters across before they break apart. So, physics tells us rain is more pancakes and hamburgers than teardrops. Hopefully I didn't ruin your childhood. A big thank you to KiwiCo for supporting PBS Digital Studios and It's Okay to Be Smart. So I talk about curiosity a lot. And just like anything else, curiosity is something you have to practice. And KiwiCo gives kids a bunch of great ways to do that. Now, KiwiCo delivers monthly projects that are designed to make learning about science and art and math and more fun and accessible. They've got five different crates for kids from two to 16 and beyond. Each crate includes an educational magazine, all supplies that you need, and detailed instructions that are written just for kids. Now, KiwiCo creates hands-on projects for kids that are super fun, but also educational in a really cool way. My son just turned one, and working on his cricket crate together, I could already see the wheels turning in his head, even at that young age. Smartest kid ever? Maybe. Whether you are a kid or you know a curious kid who might enjoy this, you can go to kiwico.com slash okay, or just click the link down in the description below.